our presentation, we will show the applications that we were able to profile to measure their power efficiency, and we will show some preliminary results. Uh, so why is battery life problems so important? Well, as far as the tech trend goes, we have faster processors, uh, screens with higher resolution, but the battery remains the primary bottleneck for the future growth. Uh, because, well, it's not improving that much. Uh, therefore, if you ever use smartphone, you know that for the comfort of use, you have to charge smartphone every evening. Otherwise, during the day, you might um, experience problems that we can switch off during the most important moment. I mean, uh, that happens with me, maybe with you. Uh, so there are several approaches to that says to that help to conserve power. First is hardware approach. Uh, chip makers like Qualcomm, Nvidia, Texas Instruments, they are making smaller, faster processors that consume less energy. And at the same time, uh, they actively implementing um, dynamic frequency and voltage scaling. So the frequency of your Processors being, uh, processor is not fixed, it's floating. Uh, but we are taking different approach, a uh, software one. What do you mean software approach? Well, first, most of the smartphone operating system have power management services. For example, they turn off your screen when there is no user activity. But the main power consumption comes from application. And what are the techniques uh, to save power? First is implement efficient algorithms. And the second is to introduce performance trade-offs. What means performance trade-offs? Is when you give up some of the features, minor features, to improve battery life. For example, you perform less calculations, provide mm, rare, less refined results, but at the same time, you save energy. Precious. But why this approach is so difficult, so hard to um, overcome? Uh, I mean, because there are literally thousands of independent software developers, and uh, power efficiency is not their main concern. They want to make application which is pretty and user appealing. So they won't sacrifice user experience for better life. But we thought. But we are researchers. What if we will come with this approach? What if we will make application flexible? Introduce power efficient options, which uh, user will be able to turn on and turn off according to their preferences. And that's how we approach this uh, particular problem. We took open source applications. We modified them by adding power saving options. And then we evaluated uh, power consumption changes uh, comparing to the baseline application. How we did this? Mohammed will tell you. Okay. This is our testing device as you can see on the screen. For testing, we use a Snapdragon uh, S4 mobile development platform on a smartphone. Uh, it's a kind of a special development tool that uh, uh, provided by Qualcomm is a company. And, um, it provides testing and development at the same time. To calculate the amount of power consumption, we used uh, Trepin is a built-in provider already in this device and uh, that measures power for different components of the uh, hardware of the device. And uh, the first types of this application we bought is uh, actually 3D uh, graphic applications. You know that in the recent years, there has been a great, uh, a big demand for uh, 3D applications. Um, the most important uh, example is 3D games. You can see a lot of people clicking in the site and everything. Uh, they are actually playing with games. The fact is that these uh, 3D graphics applications are so power hungry. Lots of uh, arithmetic operations <coughs> and memory access both on the CPU part and the GPU part are act uh, actually done. And uh, on the other hand, the display screen is also being used more intensively. So, uh, power efficiency for these types of applications are so important. Um, and this is a dragon, you can see it's a, a kind of point of 3D application. Okay. Now, we 
many times our approach, uh, our approach is actually an adaptive uh, framework based on illumination, illumination for textures and uh, lighting effects. Uh, so we have two parts, illumination and lighting effect. Uh, it's adaptive to the can, uh, condition of the battery level. So actually based on the uh, battery level, uh, I mean how critical the battery level is, we shift from one level to the other level or other part. The first part is lighting effect. Uh, you know that lighting is a, a widely used uh, technique in 3D applications. You know, the lighting actually has many effects on the uh, 3D objects. And the fact is that these kinds of effects are so expensive in terms of uh, computation and calculation. It study showed that, uh, for instance, they increased the number of CPU cycles as large as uh, 100 million cycles. So, uh, our approach here is actually, uh, we, we, um, we get it cut up here for all the objects in the 3D environment, which we call it a 3D world. world. And uh, here, what we do is, at, at least for this work, uh, we try to detect four types of uh, lighting effects. A specular light, reflection, transparency, and shadow. And we try to actually select and optimize uh, selection of these objects and try to remove all these uh, <coughs> lighting effects for these objects. In the following, the second approach is uh, texture illumination. Uh, it's actually an intelligent approach for uh, texture brightness control. Uh, actually, uh, you know that textures are simple images uh, they are used to cover the outer space of uh, these 3D objects in order to increase the visual view of these objects. Uh, and on, so, on one hand, uh, we have the texture as the main part of 3D objects, and on the other hand, um, we know that display screen accounts for up to 60% of the total battery power. Plus, Aaron, the other session, I think he talked about this statistic. So, in any case, um, our approach here actually is based on combining these two facts together. Uh, I don't want to talk about the multimedia details, but. Um, just to let you know that uh, as a main contribution of this part, you know, we get some of these uh, textures, the, not the, uh, the uh, not the significant textures, the not important textures, and modify these four channels. There are four channels of actually uh, in these uh, textures. A R G B A stands for alpha blending. It's actually the kind of uh, uh, modifying the uh, transparency, and uh, then we reproduce a new texture which actually looks darker. And all these steps are done uh, within the code, in code. Uh, as for the evaluation, uh, I use the Ambit part of the free uh, 3D engine. Uh, it's a popular lightweight engine for 3D uh, development of uh, 3D applications. And uh, yes, we chose uh, three uh, 3D applications, uh, Dragon, you can see on the screen, and um, Ninja, and also another one, Jungle. Uh, <clears throat> the fact is that, as you can see on the screen, there are minor differences between the efficient uh, version and the, <coughs> the original uh, one that you can see on the left side. Uh, so for the evaluation, um, our evaluation showed that uh, we can have uh, up to 23% of uh, power saving if we use uh, this type of approach applied to the 3D graphics for all these uh, uh, three uh, benchmarks, Dragon, Jungle, and Ninja, you can see that an average of 23% uh, could be achieved if you use a proposed approach. The next uh, application is a sky map, which uh, Yomi will actually discuss this. Yeah, hello everyone. So next, I'm going to describe my application, which is uh, Google Sky Map on Android. First, let's take a look at several screenshots of this application. So this is the main screen of this application. Basically, there are two modes in it. One is uh, automatic mode, and uh, the other is uh, manual mode. So by default, uh, when we open this application, it, uh, it is in the automatic mode, and uh, in it, the application could just adjust uh, itself, and thus, uh, enable the user to identify objects like stars or planets by just pointing their device 
to towards this object in the sky. And uh, it, it also supports like search function here. For example, we could enter the name of some planet and it could help the user uh, to identify where the planet is uh, in the sky. And uh, another interesting function about is about time traveling, which actually gives the users the ability, the ability to watch the sky uh, as, it, as it has looked in the past or as it will look in the future. Yeah, so these are the outlines of the functions I already described here. Yeah. So the problem, what, what, what we could do to save power for such an application, for such an application, here is, uh, we have four active approaches here. The first thing we could do is to call GPAs less frequently. The motivation, the motivation here is that when people are using this application, they will usually just stay in a small region and they don't have to move around or very far to watch different regions of the sky. Like, like for me, I will just sit on my chair and uh, turn and change the orientations of the, my device and to, walk, to watch the different regions of the sky. So for me, like for me, my location actually doesn't change at all. This means we don't need the GPS information that frequently. So we, or we could just even like, or we could just even pull the GPS for only once when we start the application here. So this is for the first point. And the second is to change the number of the objects shown on the shown on the map. Like this, this one is actually obvious since reducing like reducing the number of of uh, objects shown will reduce the burden when it is uh, drawing or redrawing the objects and that save power. Well, the, the third point here is to change, is, is about the sensor sensitivity issue of this application. Actually, this is a big problem with this application. Um, the problem is that it is too sensitive. Like, when we, when we just put our device on the table and we don't touch or move it at all, the map will shift, still shift frequently, like the following, like this. So this means uh, it is withdrawing frequently. And of course there are lots of actually computation and the power consumption, which is actually unnecessary here. So, the final point is about uh, the anti-aliasing used uh, in this application. First, let's take a look at the difference between the aliased one and the anti-aliased one. So the difference is uh, actually obvious. The, the age of the anti-aliased object is uh, smoother, which uh, means, uh, of course, it will take more computation and uh, power. So. <coughs> And this is the one for when we zoom in to a very large scale for this map. You, you can see that the edge is still very smooth. So we doubt the necessity of this uh, anti-aliasing used in this uh, application, since uh, usually the Android device is just, a, a, just an Android phone, and the screen is kind of small. We, there's not, not that big difference between the aliased uh, aliased object and the anti-aliased one. So we could just turn it off and that save some power. So that's basically all for my part. Next slide will introduce this application. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to talk about MagTrack. Um, MagTrack is an application that uh, you can use, uh, you can use it to record and uh, share your GPS track. So, uh, for example, if you walk outside, uh, uh, for example, if you walk up, outside, Metrac uh, use your GPS sensor on your, on your cell phone to track to record your, your path, and you can get uh, useful data, uh, and then you can upload it, upload it, it to Google, and next time you review it uh, on Google Maps. Here are some screenshots about this application. Um, 
I, I learned from this test, uh, when I walked from my apartment uh, to that, uh, you can see that uh, this location provides you uh, uh, nice figures about uh, of speed and uh, elevation. And you can have uh, other useful statistics like total distance, uh, maximum speed, average speed. Uh, so the topic of, of this, uh, of our group is energy efficiency. How can we improve the energy efficiency of this location? Um, my first obse observation is that GPS cannot work indoors. Uh, let's take another look at the track at uh, Arapa. Uh, actually, it ends here when, uh, when I end the AQ. I didn't uh, stop recording until I got S1. So, uh, so this uh, this track uh, disappears uh, once I, I end the AQ. It means that uh, the GPS signal is blocked by the building. Uh, in this case, GPS sensors still consume energy because it is tries to get uh, get uh, satellite signal. And on the other hand, Android provides two location uh, sensing mechanisms. One is GPS, the, net, uh, the other is network-based uh, uh, triangulation. The second technique uh, use your GSM signal from cell tower and your Wi-Fi signal to give you an um, approximate location of your current position. So my idea is to use uh, the Wi-Fi connection as an indicator to switch location sensing method. Uh, if you have a Wi-Fi location, uh, most likely you are in your building and uh, uh, probably the GPS signal is blocked. So uh, I got these two figures here uh, from other research papers. Uh, the, left, the left figure uh, shows the energy consumption in different uh, situations. Uh, you can see that uh, when there is no GPS signal, uh, it has highest uh, power consumption. And uh, the right, right figure simply shows that um, network-based based location providers consume less, uh, less energy than GPS. Um, another observation is that GPS can work well outdoors, but it consumes uh, too much energy. Uh, by default setting, this application uh, keeps pulling your location information from uh, satellites all the time. Uh, maybe we don't need that. And the other point about, about this ob ob observation is that uh, smartphones today are really smart. They have uh, all kinds of sensors, like uh, orientation sensor, uh, proximity sensor, uh, accelerometer sensor. And your outdoor movements always ha have some patterns. Say if you are uh, in a bus, roughly speaking, you are uh, traveling at a constant speed. If you are walking a road, um, most likely you are walking into some direction. So I think uh, those uh, mo mobility patterns can actually provide us the uh, opportunity to reduce the GPS sensing frequency. So my idea is to use sensor hints to decide when to get uh, when to sample uh, your location from uh, from GPS. So we don't need to know uh, your location uh, of information all the time. Uh, what really matter are the locations of critical waypoints, uh, which are decided by your movement patterns. So supported by the sensors, we can have following three mechanisms uh, to decide uh, whether this point is, is important or not. So the first is orientation awareness. Uh, every time you change the direction dramatically, like you you turn left or right at some crossing, uh, this point uh, is a obviously important and you sh should sample it using GPS and get the location. And the second is distant awareness. Um, given, given, the, uh, given your accuracy requirement and uh, the uncertainty of your last uh, GPS sampling, uh, you can actually know how long you can travel until you need the next uh, GPS uh, sampling. And the last one is movement awareness. So uh, if you are stationary, uh, say if uh, you are sitting on a chair to, get, to have a rest, uh, you don't need to, uh, your location does not change. You don't need to sample in your, uh, your location using GPS until you back to moving again. <coughs> so those are three, three techniques can um, help us to de de detect uh, if, uh, if the current point, point is important and we should get the location. So at the end, I would like to uh, present the general view of my proposal model. The first, uh, 
if you walk, if you are moving in the window, um, check here if there is a, a Wi-Fi connection. If so, use the network-based location provider and stop GPS sampling. Um, if, you, uh, if you are moving outdoor, periodically check the sensor state. Uh, use the hints to, to, uh, to decide the, hint, uh, the critical point and, uh, and uh, uh, sampling those locations. Once you have the locations of the critical point, uh, you can, uh, the last step is, to, uh, uh, is a travel construction process. Uh, you can put it on top. Currently, uh, the reconstruction algorithm is part of my uh, on ongoing work, which is ob obviously an important one. And uh, to deal with the errors of the reconstructed path, uh, my last step is to, is to do a map matching against the predefined map. Uh, so that's it. Uh, I will pass the presentation to Mohan. Thank you. Thanks for that. Uh, and at the occasion, I'm going to talk about like, page turn on. Page turn on is an EPUB reader whose reading progress is synchronized uh, among different devices when you are reading on different devices. And the reason for choosing this application is that reading is a frequently used function of mobile devices and it's energy consuming. So energy consumption comes from four different aspects, reasons. First of all, we generally use this for, for a long time. And during this reading procedure, we have to keep the screen bright. We have to do many interactions with the device. Also, the synchronization requires that we employ the wireless communication module, which is also quite energy consuming. And best of all, it's open source, so we could modify it to implement the improvements. Let's then see a few improvements we could try to make. First of all, it's the synchronization. This synchronization happens automatically at file loading and file closing. However, even if we are reading on the same device, it will also do this synchronization procedure. So our first improvement is to set this synchronization into manual so that we only synchronize when we want it. Second aspect is on auto lock. Auto locking, auto locking was originally designed for power saving purpose. However, in this in this case, it does not. It has effects in, on the country. When we are reading, we want to fix. Uh, we want to focus on one page and till we finish reading this the content on this page. So if it auto locks so frequently, we may have to do frequent unlocking, which is leading to more interaction, consequently, and more power consumption. So in the improvements here is to locally disable it, since we do not want to affect the other parts of the system. And third part is on animation. Animation happens on page, tur on page turning, and it's both con energy consuming and also time consuming. So a simple impro improvement here is to simply disable them and just refresh the refresh the screen directly. A fourth aspect is on control. This application provides three different modes of controlling. There are scrolling, disabled, menu scroll, and auto scroll. Auto scroll also has animation inside, and the improvement here is to decrease the re refresh frequency of those animations and also find cheapest choice among these modes. So when we are at low power, we could try, we could recommend the users choose the, the, the uh, mode with lowest cost. And the fifth is on brightness. Uh, as we know, the display screen costs, costs most of the energy of the device. And if we try to change it into night, night mode, hopefully we would save quite a bunch of energy from this part and so we will try to figure out how much cheaper it is. The final improvement is on long presses. In this application, long presses was originally des des designed for query purpose. However, personal experience shows that this is unnecessary and since it would frequently get activated by mistake, so it's actually annoying. And it also has side effects in night mode. So improvement here is simply disable it. And with all these improvements together, hopefully we, we will get a sharp decrease in the energy consumption. 
and that's for my part. I will hand off it to Martin for his presentation. Hi everyone. Uh, for my part, I studied the video player, uh, the computer in this case. I studied Dolphin player. Uh, as you know, the video players are one of the most uh, power consuming applications uh, to access to grain power so easily. So I studied it as Uh, sacrifice the, the parameters involved in the uh, 
in the uh, application, it gained more power than that, that the accuracy, the quality, uh, the visual effects, even performance, which is sacrificed to performance, it gets more power saving. Uh, but the, the difference between the final product and the final state, the, the user, and the still user can achieve the goals of the application. Great timing for so many people. Thank you. Okay, so see you.